Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Fueled by Progress, hosted by me, Mark Joseph Szymanski. Today we have with us, via Zoom, from the lovely state of New York, I believe. Is it specifically Long Island? Specifically Long Island, that's <laughs> correct, Mark. You nailed it first <laughs> we, try. There we go. We got <laughs> Lucas Brennan. How have you been, my man? Good, man. It's been a long time. It oh, has. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on. Um, so a lot of, lot to discuss. We can, we can uh, we could talk about, uh, I made some notes and we can kind of just see where it all goes. But I know that you've been doing some great stuff. I know that, uh, you know, as far as how we met, I wanted to kind of get your, just we could kind of tell the story there. But uh, we're both wearing our pit shirts. We've already established that <laughs> at the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, that's kind of where our story began. And um, yeah, I mean, if honestly, if we want to just start there, like pit, early childhood, you know, like all the stuff that the stuff kind of the way that you came up. And I mean, I, I know some of the details, but you're going to need to. Yeah. you know, reconfirm them for me. You, that you've lived in Long Island, right? For your whole yeah, life? Yeah, born and raised Long Island. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll start there. So went to uh, high school around here. And, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me first and foremost, like, why did you go to Pitt? I feel yeah. like it is a bit out there. It's a bit yeah. random, as some people would say. Yeah. But yeah, I grew up on Long Island and I, I went to, I had a couple schools in mind, a couple local stuff, a couple of state stuff, because, you know, money was not necessarily like, you know, I was told, you know, go wherever you want, we'll figure it out, which is always yeah. great to hear. I'm very lucky to have that opportunity. Yeah. And knowing that, I went and applied to a couple schools that I knew, like a friend went to um, from my high school. It's like, you know, like check out Pitt. Like, and it was like on a whim. I was like, you know what, I'll apply, see what happens. And I got accepted very quickly, which mm -hmm. was like always a great sign. And um, yeah. went to visit the campus, and I just loved it, man. I just saw myself there. And it was just a perfect, like, just sort of atmosphere for me. Yeah. A little bit like urban, definitely more urban, and there's a yeah. little bit of a suburbs touch to it, definitely. which I loved. And um, yeah, we met, what was it? Um, sophomore year, I think, of my sophomore year. Um, yeah. And we were following a very similar, you know, academic program, computer science yeah. at the time, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, um, I believe it was discrete math at the time. <laughs> it might have actually been my freshman year. Now that I say it, with Yes, of course. <laughs> and that class was, um, there, there was a time when we had, I think, I don't want to badmouth anybody, but it, it yeah. got a little disorganized, right? And <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I saw you there. We were in the same recitation. And yeah, if you know yeah, what recitation yeah. is, right? I think it was like in a bigger school, you sort of break up yeah. into these little groups with a TA. And it was a little disorganized, but we got there and I had a question and I just feel like I wasn't getting the right sort of answers that I wanted. And I reached out to you and I believe, you know, Zach was there too. Yeah. And uh, that's sort of how we kicked off, you know, a, a, what I would consider a very great friendship at, at yeah. school. And um, we followed that path, you know, going a couple of years in, you know, and you were following computer science. So was I. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's sort of where we, you know, blossomed as a friendship, yeah. I would say. Right. Yeah. And like struggling i mean i mean i would say struggling <laughs> over projects together yeah. in a dining hall we we're getting up getting another plate of food right and then i was sitting there thinking what are we gonna do it was the night before the project. anyway yeah so that, that's sort of where we started and i think it was a great sort of foundation for a friendship because we really really were struggling together we yeah. were in it together i'd say so yeah. Yeah, that's a bit, you know, ask me any question you want man, about my upbringing, but like that's sort of the, the very brief start of, of where I went, you know, like high school to Pittsburgh and uh, computer science. I can get right into, you know, what yeah. I do now, but like, hey, if you yeah. want to ask a question, stop me, feel free. No, 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 man, that's that's great. <laughs> Honestly, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, people that, have watched, people that have watched the show and know me, they probably know that I have a... Uh, it's a suspect memory. Like, I mean, it, it's it's mm -hmm. not great. And, and you know, obviously, like, uh, we're friends and, we, and we've known of each other for a long time, but like... When you bring up discrete math like that, all of that shit is just washed. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, oh, and then you and then you say and it's like, oh god, I, and immediately you know, like I know, like Beniti, like you know, it's yeah, like exactly. What, what a time! What a time that was. It really uh, was. But yeah, uh, and then you, you hit the nail on the head there with the di with the uh, Market Central made that oh, reference god, the other yeah, day, and then we, we were yeah, <laughs> it's just, yeah, me me getting like multiple plates of food. And then, and then I don't even, I don't even know the projects. I can't remember. Just like, oh, random, like random, weren't they like actual coding projects? I can't remember yeah. all the classes that yeah, we, yeah. That we so, had. Yeah, yeah, so I think we had a couple of like the fundamental Java classes together at one point, or maybe we were getting a bit more intermediate, like algorithms and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so a lot of the projects were really like, I, I, I hate to say, they were annoying, right? They yeah. were just, they were there to help make sure that you knew what you were doing and like you understood the code. Right. And yeah, and I had, you know, I, don't didn't eat that much at the time and i wouldn't consider myself still <laughs> yeah. wouldn't consider myself a very you know a great eater yeah. but um 
I had a dining plan, right? Because I lived on campus. You didn't. Yeah. So it yeah. was very, like, it was like, let's go to market because I could just swipe you in and then boom, yeah. you were just, you made the most of it every single time. And I respect <laughs> that. I mean, I still do to this day. You would just like, I would come back with two plates and I'd look over. I'm like, I'm looking around, right? Like, where is Mark? And he'd come back with six. And then he would just, it wouldn't stop. I was like, this man knows how to eat. And like, I, I would consider, you know, that's the start of me. Like, I'm trying to get there and eat more and eat maybe a bit healthier. So I was that, trying I mean, to help you. I was trying yeah, to influence that's you. Exactly I was trying to influence what it was, right? We can make it that. <laughs> Yeah, that's oh my god, that that is that definitely sticks in my mind. Though. I mean, yeah, market me market central was a uh, was absolutely a vibe where uh, you know yeah I remember I remember stealing your swipes. I apologize about no, that. I'm gonna no. have to repay you for some of that at some point. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean that that was that was it was honestly I mean you know we could talk about anything. That was that was a great it was an interesting time. And you know I, yeah. I didn't I didn't fully think about this before we hopped on here, but I'm interested to get your take on it because. So here's what I think. I've, I, I, as you and many other people, have evolved since then, right? That was, mm-hmm. you know, four or five years ago, whatever, whatever the case may be, right at this point. And, you know, we've both been in different places in our lives. We went through college. You know, we graduated. We did all that stuff. We have, we've had jobs. We've done different things. Looking back on it, that seemed really shitty. You know, like parts of that seemed really shitty. Like, you know, like just kind of like working through different like problems and, and projects and stuff like that. Like, I'm interested to get kind of the perspective like you, I don't know if like you can remember how you were then, like your thoughts on mm-hmm. it, but even just like now, like looking back on college, because I have some interesting thoughts on it. I've discussed it maybe on the show a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. maybe on other social media, like just what do you kind of think? Like, do, what do you think your overall, and, and maybe start here. So you, you ended up just with four years computer science, right? From Pitt? Yep. I got a bachelor's degree in actually three and a half years in computer science. Oh yeah, I forgot. Minor your... in applied statistics time. Nice. Yeah. So do you think... And you can kind of tie it in, obviously, to what you do now and everything like that. But, like, do you think that it was worth it? What's your kind of, like, overall takeaway from college? And then, like, honestly, the the follow-up question is that I always think about is, you know, eventually you're going to have a family someday. What do you mm-hmm. end up doing with your kids there? What do you try to, like, push them to do? And we can kind of just kind of just throw some ideas around. Yeah, there. yeah, absolutely. So that's a great question, actually. You're going to have to remind me of the follow-up one. But yeah. Was it worth it? So. I applied to a few different schools, like I said, local stuff. And, and mm-hmm. when I look back on it, if I really wanted to min max my education and, and the cost of it, mm-hmm. I, I'll tell you what I would have done. I would have commuted to a school very close to me called Stony Brook. I don't know if mm-hmm. you're aware of it, but it was a SUNY school at the time. I've heard of it, is, obviously. So I think I think I know somebody that went. <laughs> was it? Oh my God! Something's telling me. That, have you ever heard of the LA Beast? No, I could be totally wrong. Mm-hmm. I could be okay. totally wrong on that. I could <laughs> totally wrong. Somebody, maybe it was you. It might have been you. I, I don't know. I, that, that name, we'll, we'll figure it out. But yeah, we will. <laughs> so, <laughs> keep going. so, yeah, Stony Brook is it was very close to me. Like, I easily could have commuted probably 20 minutes. It might have been very similar to what you did to Pitt, Pitt really, yeah. when I think about it. But it would have costed a lot less. I probably would have gotten a similar, if not maybe, you know, maybe a little bit worse than me, a little bit better. It's hard to tell. But, like, a very similar right. education. They have a great computer science program. But when I think back on it, you know, it's easy to say that now, right? Like, knowing right, it, like, course. knowing, having the knowledge, having the student loan debt, and having, you know, people that helped me with it, which I'm very grateful for. But what would I have been better off if I commuted and spent much less money and had a very similar education and stayed home, right? And I think it's it's an argument I go back and forth on with myself quite yeah. a lot. So, but what I've realized and maybe what I've landed on, I don't land on anything, right? I, I was <laughs> arguing with myself, but yeah. that, you know, the experiences I've made at Pitt and, and what I did there, having that sense of independence, I think was really important for me. I, I live on my own now, but like, I still suck at it. But like, I think I, I gained very valuable experience at Pitt and um, met really great people, including you. So, yeah. um, and at the time, like at Pitt, right? When we met, like I, I, there wasn't a ton of people at college that I knew, like I didn't have a ton of friends. I don't know if you got that vibe from me, but <laughs> um, I like, I live with people, you know, I was friends with the people I live with and I still am in touch with them. But like it's in college, I found it very difficult outside of like your academic program and outside of where you live. It was very difficult for me to make friends with people. So like having those skills and trying to, to navigate that by yourself with just like, you know, sink or swim attitude, right? I think that was very useful for me. I don't know if I would have gotten the same life experience at Stony, somewhere like Stony Brook, mm-hmm. um, which is maybe where I could have fallen in the middle too, which is another option, right? Somewhere cheaper, but farther away in New York State that, that could have, I think about that a lot, but right. But I think Pitt was worth it. And I learned a great deal at school about computer science and some of the professors there were absolutely incredible. And, you know, we talk about there yeah. were some bad ones. There are some <laughs> bad eggs. And I'm not going to bring them up because, you know, they do what they have to do in their own yeah. way. Right. Yeah. But there were some great people. I can mention someone like Bill Laboon. I don't know if you had mm-hmm. him in the computer science. Department, I did. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he recently left to do some really cool stuff abroad, but I, I don't mm-hmm. know. But 
he was someone that really shaped the way that I write code today, which might not seem very significant, but the way that I interact with people, maybe any stakeholders of a project, right? Not even technical, technically related to the, maybe they're not writing code, but they're involved. So I think, you know, those, like I said, those experiences were just huge for me. And I think they were so important that was it worth six <laughs> figures in debt? Maybe yeah. not, right? But I can't change that now. Right. So it's an argument I make with myself quite frequently, like I said. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not a it's not a question to kind of like, you know, bring up regret or anything. Mm -hmm. It's more of just like, and, and hindsight is always 2020. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So it's more of just, I always think about it, and it's kind of the, it's kind of the spirit of this show, right? Like fueled <laughs> by progress, like yeah. trying to, trying to take experiences and life lessons and all the things that you learn and whatever and you know you're, you're gonna make mistakes and yeah. i'm not saying that was a mistake or not right and everybody everybody does things you take just the experiences whether they're good positive negative in between whatever and then you learn from them and you you evaluate well should i have done this should i've done that and again it's not to bring up regret because i don't really mm -hmm. have any regrets personally like i don't yeah. i don't like to live my life like that because it doesn't matter in the moment you're making the decision and Probably there was a lot of positives out of that. Maybe there were some negatives. Doesn't matter, you know. But the follow up is kind of exactly yeah. to that. Is you know you have kids one day, and it's it's a broader conversation because yeah. I don't know if Pitt really falls into the category of like, t you know, tuition that is actually, you know, like destroying kids' lives as far as like the the amount of it and stuff like that. But there's there is a lot. Like I mean, I don't I don't know what the actual numbers are for out of state and things, but I know a that lot. there. I, I know well. <laughs> I mean, you could tell me better than that. I could, than I could, than I would know. But you know, that is what I'm saying is, you know, there's a lot of places out there, maybe Pitt included, that are just charging kids a shit ton of money mm -hmm. for maybe the same education as you could get more locally or whatever yeah, it is. Different ways. And I think one of the questions that always comes up is, do you think that having a name like Pitt? as opposed to, you know, Stony Brook, for instance, it would weigh anything differently on a resume if you're trying to get a job. Um, I just, I, I ask these questions again because I constantly battle with this as well. Yeah. I think, well, I'm, one day I'm going to have kids and they're going to go through high school and they're going to be like, well, hey, you know, dad, should we go to college? Like, what should we do or whatever? And I can't, I honestly, right now, knowing what I know, I can't tell them just go to college. I don't yeah. know if that's like the greatest answer to that question. No, yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting thing to bring up, right? Because when I have kids, I have no idea either. I'd like yeah. to be able to tell you right now, which is was why I believe is that if I had a kid and he said, I don't want to go to college, I could say great. I would say great. You don't want to go to college, yeah. but you have to have a plan. I don't sure. want someone, my kid, to be like, I'm not going to go to college. I'm just going to figure it out, right? That's, it's interesting to think about, but I want you to have a plan, have a, have a strategy, have a future, have a vision, right? That's what's mm -hmm. important to me. But I want to be in a place, whether it be financially or mentally, right, to tell my kid, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, right? right. If that's college, what college is that? Or if it's not college, is it a different plan? And I think there's a lot of different options out there. But I think more importantly for me is like telling my kid, hey, like, my kid wants to go to Stanford, it's $80,000. You're like, I'll figure it out. Like, if you want to go there, and that's important to you. And you think you can learn a lot there and, and gain these life lessons. But, hey, I'll figure it out. Like, I'll take home whatever right. it may be yeah and i think that's where i want to be um in life as a parent but i want to be super supportive and tell them hey like you want to go here like let's figure it out like let's visit it and i'll, I'll be supportive i don't want to if my kid says you know i'm gonna get a liberal arts degree you know i mm. i don't know there's discussions to be had there i'd like to push them to something that they like to do and that they're good at because i don't right. know if college is necessarily all about what you like to do anymore yeah. because you know i got very lucky in the sense that i had no computer science education in high school absolutely mm -hmm. nothing I knew it obviously involved computers. I knew it yeah. involved math and I knew it involved problem solving. I was like, hey, like this sounds great. Like, but I got extremely lucky. Like not everyone is that lucky. Right. Like maybe you want to do art or something and, and you're good at it. You're really good at art, but is college really about, you know, what you like anymore? Or is it about what you're good at to sort of maximize your money spent and your and what you get out of it? Like is that how much is that degree worth? So right. Um, but what were you saying about the beginning about Pitt versus Stony Brook? I don't know. It's a great question. Mm -hmm. I, I have honestly, if I had to guess, I would say no. I don't think it would have mattered if, mm -hmm. I, if, especially for this job, if they said, you know, I went to Stony Brook and I went to Pitt. What I think matters more is about the skills you have and how you present yourself in an interview, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you have a very, very comparative education, right? A bachelor's degree in the program they're looking for, I don't know how much weight that Pitt versus Stony Brook would have had. And that's the battle I have. So mm -hmm. did I love Pitt? Absolutely. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's an argument that could be made there. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's tough, you know, I mean, and, and you never know again, but, um, you know, you make a good point about, you know, is college about the thing that you like or the thing that you're good at mm -hmm. to maximize value? That's a really good point. And 
you know, I haven't heard too many people phrase it and articulate it in that in that way. And I look back on my experience so far, and you know, I went to school. I actually ended up with an information science degree, so yep, I, I, I took, remember, a, yep. took out of that uh, that computer side thing. But um, but I mean, it's kind of related, but it was more like business and technology, kind of a blend of that. Probably where I should have been, and maybe I would have been like mm-hmm. you and graduated earlier if I would have started there. Um, but you know, again, things happen. And then I worked as a marketing director for like two and a half years, including the internship and all that sort of stuff. So that wasn't really like, it taught me a lot, right? But mm-hmm. I honestly feel like, I don't know. I mean, I learned things at Pitt. I, 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 it's different for me. So, yeah. and, and let me provide this perspective to anybody that's listening and just something for us to think about and maybe, and maybe chat about here. My experience was different, right? I met people like you. I met a couple other people. I had some friends that, you know, like Zach that, you know, I knew from high school and all that sort of stuff, and I've connected with a lot of people, but I have I have done so much more, and I feel like I've gotten so much more benefit from all of the stuff that I've done after school than the I did course. than I yeah than I was when I was in school. Like when I was when I got out and I had the internship and I started working full time at a local real estate agency. Mm-hmm. I was working my way up there, you know. I, I didn't really have a lot of skills per se at the time. I, I you know I knew how to use some PowerPoint things and different stuff for, on the marketing side. I learned from people that were already doing stuff there. And then I think the thing that set me apart, and I think sets a lot of people apart, sort of is you take the knowledge that you have and you build on it, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's honest more than anything, more than like being smart. I think the idea of you know much like you know both of us were you know throughout college and even now, I'm sure is like. You, it, you don't have to be smart. You have to Mm-mm. understand how to learn. You have to understand yeah. how to get better, like be better at getting better almost in a sense. And I think that that is one of the most important things. And that's the thing that I would like to teach my kids or anybody really yeah. all the stuff that I'm doing. And the point that I'm trying to make though is that when I was there and I was actually working, I was learning a ton and I was actually doing it. You know, I wasn't mm-hmm. like, I wasn't like understanding the theory and then it was tough to put it in practice. There's so many people now that I talk to all the time and almost like perpetually in school and I don't think that's a bad thing Mm -hmm. but when you're not like actually doing the things I think it becomes tough sometimes because there's that real world application almost just becomes a miss I think so I I just I learned so much there and then in this past year where I just said you know what I'm gonna just do my own thing like I've made more connections I have you know I think I've learned 10 times as much because I just like am doing whatever I want the one thing that I'll say is I think it might take a certain type of person. I'm not saying I'm special. I'm just saying like mm-hmm. maybe I'm weird in the <laughs> fact that I just want to do things. You know, I just want to 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 progress and get better. And mm-hmm. I think I think there's a lot of people like that out there, but I don't know if they I don't know if it's a confidence issue or they just need to get there. I don't know there's a lot of rambling, but I, you know, no, it's just I, it's kind of it's kind of the way I think about it. No, I think you make a good point. Like when in school and these coding projects specifically, it's so hard to emulate the real world. I think the professors think they do a good job and, and we think the same thing. Like, oh, this right. is exactly what we're going to do. But I think what you said is a common thing. Like when I went to my job, maybe six months in, I'm like, I was talking to my parents. I was talking to my girlfriend. I was like, I may have learned more in these six months than I have in, in 18 years in my entire right. life. What, like you said, when you're when you're hands on, when you have a goal and you have something that actually matters, mm-hmm. I think these projects, you're doing it for a grade. I think you're doing it because that's what you have to do. But right. at a job, there, there's such there's much more implications to what you're doing. I think you take more time to learn about why you're doing it. And that's why, like, like you said, the job, man, it's just the experience is that it gives you is, is almost is it's invaluable. I, I don't know how to describe the fact that, you know, these six months, and I've been here in two years now, like, you know, you could multiply that, right? Six months, I learned more than 18 years. I, I feel like I've lived a whole lifetime of learning in this one, two years of my job, right? So mm-hmm. I think you make a good point there. And you articulated it well, yeah. even though you said you were rambling. <laughs> I tend to do that. Yeah. Uh, Amanda, Amanda tells me that all the time. Just shut up, <laughs> shut up, Mark. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, it's an interesting topic. And like I said, I always like to think about it because, you know, college is a big investment. And especially, to, like you said, depending on where you go, in state, out of state, that's a lot of money. And, and the other thing that I'll bring up here too, and, and maybe we, maybe we uh, connect on this, maybe we don't, is like I got hugely into personal finance. I don't know if that was around the time mm. that we, I can't remember. I, again, memory is terrible. I can't remember if that was like while we were together in school or if it was like kind of as I was getting out of it. Might have been as I was getting out of it. There's, it's, it's, it, it, I think it's longer than I think. I feel like maybe, yeah. I feel like Pitt was like yesterday, but it wasn't. I don't mm. know. But regardless, um, when you take out loans and when you have like student debt and all that, 
there is becomes a sense of responsibility that you have mm-hmm. to pay that back and you have to go to work in exchange for paying all that back. And I just got super into personal finance and I was like, all right, I'm going to pay off all my loans and do that as quickly as possible because I just don't want to be in that, t- that type of debt. And it's, it's, it's a weird thing because we ask our kids to take, to, you know, take these risks or sign these, you know, loan papers, what, however you want to slice it. You feel when, real probably when they're, yeah, kids. when they're 18, it's like, oh yeah, this is great. Okay, great. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to learn some stuff. I'm going to play around and party or whatever. And then, you know, I'm going to come out of it with this big bill that I'm in like indebted towards. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just don't know. I, after seeing it, that's, that's honestly one of the bigger reasons that I can't like just straight up recommend it yeah, me to, neither. to, you know, newer people coming through. Can I ask you a question? Stuff. <laughs> fuck yeah man <laughs> do you feel like you got the any like how what do you feel like your return on investment was for pit because i know you did a few different things right because yeah. I, I would like to get your thoughts on what you thought about computer science and sort of why you switched to information science i think that'd be interesting to me i will tell you everything that i can remember um yeah, of course <laughs> <laughs> um i started in computer engineering that was that was oh, bad that was bad i forgot you were coe okay yeah 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 that was bad um because uh like i don't i don't i just wasn't i might have been able to do it now but i failed um multiple classes i failed linear algebra twice i'm pretty sure okay i think i f- i think i failed chem two and then got a c in it or something like that like mm-hmm. it's it's a joke between me and zach because we were in the same classes for a while <laughs> and and it was like i was just doing i wasn't doing good because I, I don't know what the deal was but it, pretty much computer engineering then computer science and then ultimately information science yeah. should have been there from the beginning because i think that that was just the, the best fit for me but again you find those things out as you're as you're going through it um the question you bring up, obviously, you know, in uh, response to me asking you, is is a good one because my situation was obviously different. Yeah. Okay, so I I might have sounded to this point like I hate college or like I you no, know, yeah. you know, screw college or whatever. Uh, the thing was though, I feel like my situation was almost the best that you could have asked for in a sense. I went to a, a pretty decent school, we would yeah. say in Pitt. Uh, I lived close, so I just was able to commute originally via the bus but then you know just via car and park up in the oc lot like way up in the fucking uh, the heavens of that um and then uh like so i was able to do that save a good amount of money not Mm -hmm. you know commuting and everything like that in state obviously so that's that's even more money saved and then i was actually fortunate enough to get like federal i didn't have to take any private loans so i got federal oh great so uh, all things considered i came out and I had help, obviously, a little bit from my from my my grandmother and my parents and stuff like that. I'm mm-hmm. very fortunate in those regards. Always thankful for that. But I came out with like 26 grand in debt, and I was able to pay that off in one year. Mm-hmm. So for me, the ROI was I would say high mm. in a sense, but at the same time, I feel like I. I just, I always struggle with the idea. It's like, did I really get the value out of it though? Like I learned some things about myself, but I think about it now and ultimately it's probably the best, but I'm kind of like this, I I think weirdly about it because over this last year I've made so much progress, Mm -hmm. but I don't know if I would have been this mature without going to college and without having that job. You know what I'm saying? Like I know people now, here's the thing. I know people now that over this, like, so we're, we're like 24, 23, right? Mm-hmm. In there. I know people, and I've met people this year specifically, that have been working on their own shit since they were 18. Yeah. And they are, I mean, they're further ahead than I am. You know, like they yeah. have actual things going, they have brands going, they're making money, they're doing all sorts of stuff. And I just think the the battle that I have is not, should I have gone here, should I have gone there? It's, it's was what I did better or worse than if i just would have said all right you know what after high school i'm just gonna i'm just gonna start being an entrepreneur in a sense or i'm gonna start building my own thing now here's the one thing the one thing is that i had absolutely no ambition to be an entrepreneur back then so but now it's like basically all i think about so i don't know i mean it's a great question like i said hopefully i answered it decently but yeah the roi is i think it was there but i don't know if it was I, i always battle with that you know, it's that so hard to way. it's so hard to put a value on things like like yeah. ambition and yeah. and life lessons and independence. I it's I find it very difficult to put a value on it. For Would sure. it be six figures? Uh, probably not, but yeah. <laughs> it's hard to. Yeah, you don't know, and I, and unfortunately, one of the things about life it seems like is that obviously you don't know things until they happen. But a lot of times you have to 
like I, kind of a, like I mentioned, you have to sometimes go through things and yeah. experience things in order to get to where you would have been. Like, and you might just never have gotten there if you didn't go through that one thing. You know, however positive or negative that that event is or that time is, it's just you know that's kind of something that uh, I've started to see as well. Mm. But but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, college aside though, I mean, it's it's obviously how we met and it's it's, yeah. it's, it's sparked a great relationship and mm-hmm. I'm I'm happy to see that everything that you're doing. We got a lot more stuff to talk about because I know that you are, uh, you know, so obviously computer science. So tell me about like what you what post pit is like. So have you just been at one job or did you have multiple? I had one job. I am okay. extremely fortunate to have accepted. Well, now that I'm a post pit, yeah, I have one job. I did have an internship in my senior year of school. Mm-hmm. Wait, might have been my junior year. It actually was my junior year last semester where I had an internship where I don't think I wrote a single line of code, which would be extremely surprising to a lot of people, which, um, again, don't want to badmouth them. I think I got a lot of experience out of it, maybe about um, how formal it was, right? Because it was a pharmaceutical company and there are so many standards. There are so many, like they hand you a stack of SOP standard operating procedures. I'm sure you know what that is, but yeah. where you got to sign, you got to read. And there, there is so much standard formalization of it. I kind of didn't like it. I, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah. It was not my favorite. You might know me as someone who's pretty, I don't know. I, I like to have a, a guideline and routines, but I like to have my own independence and do what I think is, is going to help the company. So yeah. I had that internship and was very fortunate enough to um, have someone I knew with this, my current company, you know, get my resume in there and say, you know, like this, you know, maybe you should interview him. He's, he's looking, he's graduating in, um, at that time I knew I was graduating in December. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I went through the interview process and actually accepted the position before I went to college my senior year. So it's very difficult to stay motivated yeah. knowing I had that job lined up, but I was yeah. very fortunate, right? And I'll, I'll say that a lot. I'm extremely lucky, and I don't think this is everybody's path by any means, but right. I'm extremely lucky, and I worked my ass off to graduate three and a half years. I'll say that, mm-hmm. um, knowing that it would save me and my parents a lot of money, right? And one semester was probably 20, 22 grand. Let's you know yeah. put a number on it. You yeah. know, that's a lot of money for me just working my ass off. And I put a lot of effort in to graduate in that time, but um, graduated in December of 2018. Uh, had my graduation ceremony and started my job two weeks later in January of 2019. So there nice. was, you know, very little turnaround time. <laughs> I uh, had a couple of weeks to relax and get prepped, but um, that job, this job that I work, currently work at is a uh, blue matrix. So it, it's very hard to put myself under the umbrella of software developer because there's a mm-hmm. lot more to it. Um, and you'll hear this buzzword probably very often. I would consider myself a full stack developer at this point. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I work on all gamuts of, of the applications that we have there. So um, what else can I say? So, Another unique part of this job is that the commute that I was doing, and I don't do now due to COVID, but um, I live on Long Island. I still lived on Long Island with my parents for a good amount of time, probably, you know, four or five months at that point. Actually, it might have been over a year, but, you know, we, I lived with my parents for a while, save some money, build up some income and uh, pay off certain things. And I helped my parents there. But I commuted to the city, which was about, about a two and a half hour commute via train oh each gosh. way. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Right. So. Um, and it's you, you'll you'll be shocked to hear how common that is on Long Island, and right is uh, mm-hmm. even essentially how expensive living on Long Island is. And I can tell you that right now, it is expensive um, to have that commute where you know I was leaving when it was dark, coming home when it was dark most days. You know during that season, so it's about a two and a half hour commute each way on train. You know maybe two hours on a good day, so I was probably home you know door to door four hours total you know, throughout mm-hmm. the day. So it's a good amount of time, but yeah. Even that experience, I would say, is is enlightening, right? Because, you know, you, you that was you know, I, I I hate to complain, right? I have, a, I have a fantastic job, I have a fantastic family, everything, but that commute was brutal. At uh-huh. the LIRR, I'm happy to slam down that platform right now on Field by Progress and tell you that <laughs> that LIRR is horrible. There is always delays. There is there are it is awful. It's disgusting and it was terrible. But I'm very fortunate now to have worked from home, starting you know March 13th, right when this COVID stuff hit. Yeah. I maybe nailed that date, but. I've been working home for about six months. So you can mm-hmm. get a little bit more about what Blue Matrix does. And it's very complicated. I'm happy to try and explain it. I even yeah. don't know some aspects of it, but yeah. right, let's get into it. So essentially yeah. Blue Matrix, what they do, we are a one-stop shop. I think I wrote a little note here. One-stop shop for the crea- the creation, the presentation, and analyzing financial research. Interesting. So tell me if that makes any sense. But so we sort of have sell so we have fin- firms. So it's yep. FinTech? Yes, FinTech. Gotcha. Nailed it. You know, FinTech is... You know, what's interesting, too, is that if you knew me and if you did and you could mm. you talk to me, I knew absolutely nothing about finance. And now we are <laughs> absolutely opposite in that effect. And I've yeah. tried to clue myself up now that, you know, yeah. I have an income that I can sort of diversify a portfolio as much as that yeah. does sound buzzwordy as well. Yeah. Um, yeah so fintech. And it's really interesting because now I, 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 kn- I knew nothing. I couldn't even I could tell you what a stock was probably when I got this job. But that was the biggest learning curve for me is actually understanding what our clients do and um anything about finance so yeah. that's what i do and um 
tiny uh, Java people here. I do a lot of Java, do a lot of Python. I did some security stuff. And, and like I said, I ran the gamut in those first six months to try and touch as many different areas of the system as I could to get a feel for where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And what I love most about Blue Matrix, I'll say this right now, is that um, my boss will tell you every single time, it's, it's, it's a choose your own adventure. So if you find something interesting and there is a problem to be solved in that space, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll get you in that space and you can learn it and you can, you can do it. And that's what I love. And what I touched on earlier is I have the freedom to do what I think I do best and, and what I think helps the company best and what I have fun with. And, and I feel like there's, they really try and help me get into that space. So yeah, feel free to ask me any questions about yeah. Blue Matrix. I'll try and answer them, but that is the, the most broad explanation I could give to you. Yeah, no, no, it sounds, it sounds interesting. I mean, especially FinTech nowadays, it's, you know, there's, there's so many, the way that when I think of FinTech, I think of all these like, you know, new trading, probably one of the biggest things in the last, like, I don't know how long it's been, like five years where it's blown up is like all these these apps, right? So when mm -hmm. I was getting into personal finance, you had to go to Fidelity and I actually went to the store and set oh, up yeah? like a brokerage account and, and Roth IRA on that. And now you can just pop on your phone, you can download Robinhood and you start trading yep. stocks. Boom, like that. It's, it's crazy. So, um, but no, I mean like, so as far as like what you're doing mm -hmm. and everything, you're that, I mean, you're full stack developers. So like yep. what's... Uh, we don't need to go obviously into like confidential clientele. Yeah, of course, of like course. That, but what's like a, what's like a, can you give like the outline of like a recent project or something that you've had to work on? Hmm. That's an interesting question. So yeah, like when I say, when I say presentation of, of financial research, what I would, what we consider libraries or portals. So we okay. have like a repositories where a client can access your financial research and, and have an, a, an analyst, your coverage and, and all the sectors you cover and the documents involved if you're entitled to it. So mm -hmm. Something I worked on recently, but you know, I've sort of fallen off a little bit, but it's an interesting example because it was a completely new tech stack to me. Um, mm -hmm. some, uh, we use a different uh, front end framework that you may not have heard of or may, may have heard of, Vue.js, so a uh, JavaScript, but Java standard, right? Java built. Um, and yeah, you, you we're, we're involved in anything from the planning process to um, actually writing code to designing things. And, and usually we offload that in, like to a design team because like, you mm -hmm. know, I maybe I think make things look like shit probably mm -hmm. half the time. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, you know, I, I would consider myself a full stack developer because, you know, I don't just do front end, you know, I, I'm, I'm all over the place, right? Because if a server side, you know, you need help there, I, even managing databases I've been involved in, right? Migrating right. from different MySQL versions, stuff like that. Um, and that's another good example, right? Is encryption and, and security. And, you know, probably better than anyone, FinTech, like in financial, everything has to be as secure as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, encryption both in transit and at rest and, mm -hmm. At rest is a little bit more difficult um, in the file system space. So um, that was a project I was involved in and still am, you know, actively trying to migrate clients to different MySQL versions where you can encrypt that data at rest. So, mm -hmm. um, and you know, that touches back to where Blue Matrix, I can do whatever I want really, as long as I'm solving a problem and there is a little bit of structure to it, you know, and you're, you're assigned these things to do and, and you want to be in that space, they'll put you there. So right. yeah, that's a brief overview of, of what I've been doing recently and um, onboarding new clients is something I'm also involved in and mm -hmm. having them, you know, cause and not every client, it's not a cookie cutter situation, right. right? Every client has different needs and everybody has different things they want to be involved in. So having to, the ability to onboard those clients is also very important. It's something I've been doing probably for the last six months, you know, big clients and trying to get them to sign to uh, be happy with the platform. Gotcha. So how big is the company roughly? Like roughly how many employees? Uh, it's a good question. We're, we're, we're actively expanding, um, but roughly a little over a hundred employees. Um, okay. And so pretty small, uh, like, and that's probably, you probably got that vibe by me saying, you know, if there's a problem, you can go solve it. But yeah. I think there's much more structure and bigger companies, which a few of my employees have, my colleagues have come, have come from like mm -hmm. the big banks and the big you know, FinTech industries right. like JP Morgan, all those stuff. So, um, yeah, so pretty small, but we're, 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 we're sort of global. You know, we have a couple yeah. off, we have an office in Romania, we have an office here in New York, we have an office in Durham. So, you know, it's pretty global for that size of employees. So we're, we're all yeah. over the place. Nice. Nice. So when you said to kind of like unpack, like kind of what you're doing and like what mm -hmm. your, your path is almost the stuff that you're doing right now, are you actively, are you writing code every day? Or are you, like you said, more onboarding and stuff like that, that to bring people onto like, you, uh, it's like a, po a portal for yeah, FinTech? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, a part of it, but you know, there's, we do have a ton of applications. So like the creation, actually authoring the research is, is a huge, probably our biggest part of it. But, mm -hmm. um, what was my pathing? It's interesting because when you start, they usually have you start in like a level two tech support sort of role. Mm -hmm. um, but that is that is mainly, and you're not writing a ton of code, but you are reading a lot of code and you are trying to look at logs and you're trying to understand what the problem was and maybe even suggest a bug fix to a developer at that point. Mm -hmm. So that was where I started as in level two support. I did that probably for 
anywhere from like six to maybe 12 months, you know, almost a year of just support, not just support, but that was a big portion of my day was coming in and, and solving, solving problems. And, mm -hmm. and I found that quite satisfying, mm -hmm. even though I wasn't writing code, like I was, you know, it was very easy for me to take a problem and in one day provide a concrete solution and a fix to that problem. Yeah, almost like QA. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, a QA class at college really piqued my interest, but you know, <laughs> I, I sort of fallen off that a little bit, but there's something to be said about, about level two support being satisfying because you know, you fix a problem in one day, you fix a problem in one hour and now you've, you've made the client happy. You've made, you know, the L1 support happy. Everyone's happy, right? Mm -hmm. When you are involved in these bigger projects, there is no, there's a little bit less satisfying because you might push some code, but there's, there's environments involved. There's a state, there's an integration, there's pre-production, there's everything, right? So you don't immediately see that and it's not immediately making an impact, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. that's something that, you know, you, you got to balance, right? You got to have a balance of knowing that you're making this change and it will go to production eventually, but mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a less satisfying tenure there. But now I'd say every day, I'm pretty much writing code every day at this point. Gotcha. Okay. So that, so that brings up an interesting question too, because, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned that at the beginning of COVID, you went from going into the office yeah. every day. Mm -hmm. to to now just kind of like chilling at home and just working yeah. remotely like millions of other people have done obviously um talk to me a little bit about that because i had i had a note here because obviously i've never lived in new york or long yeah. island <laughs> or dealt with any of that i've never even been there yep. so i know that you already alluded to it a little earlier that the commute on on certain times depending on where you're at right into yep. the suburbs into the city like however you know kind of goes there it can be uh quite daunting so yep. so what is you know, kind of related to work, how did your life kind of change? And, and if you can give me like kind of an idea of painting, painting a picture of like what it is to live in like a much more densely populated area where, yeah. I mean, even not even related to work, just in general, like what yeah. is, what is that all like, especially, especially during these crazy times? Yeah. So you, you touched on it. So, um, the commute was brutal, like you said, but, <laughs> yeah. um, the city, there's something about the city where, you know, there's, it's just, there's so many people. I could tell you right now, I don't love New York City. I'm happy yeah. to tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I did work there and I still probably continue will after this is all, yeah. you know, back to a situation where we can. Um, the city, man, it's so crowded. There, there is, everyone is on a mission though. And that's what I like about it. You know, that there's, everyone is doing something. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, that are just have their headphones on and they're just on a mission. They're running maybe even just where they have to go. Yeah. And you know, that's where you get to when now that I'm in the suburbs now. So, you know, this things are a little bit more laid back. Things are a little bit more relaxed. Um, there's something to be said about, you know, a little bit of a motivation decrease. And I'm sure that's very common when like everyone starts to switch back to this work from home vibe that we have now and where, you know, we've certain shutdowns. I don't know if Pennsylvania is probably similar to New York. I'm not sure. It almost yeah. follows it to a T actually. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah. And it makes it, it, it definitely was a challenge for me at first. And I told everybody I knew I hated it. I said, I hate work from home. There is no structure. You wake up, you roll into your chair. I hate it. I hate it. And I'm happy to report now. I absolutely love work from home. And uh, nice. there, there's, there's a balance, right? And I, with, almost with everything where maybe in the future, I could come in a few days and then work from a few days and, mm -hmm. and split that. I think that might be more common going forward. And as more companies probably are now just switching everyone work from home. We don't need this massive office space in New York yeah. where we spend 30,000 a month or whatever it is. So yeah, th there was a motivation decrease. There, there was, yeah. there was a time where it was a, it was a, um, a transition, if you will, right. Coming in here and, and work from home a lot and mm -hmm. being home a lot because I wasn't used to being home at 5 PM and work didn't stop at 5 PM when right. I was in the city work stopped when I got home at seven 30, you know, mm -hmm. and then, you have much less time to, to do what you want at night. It was almost like the night was chalked when you got home at 7.30, you eat, you maybe you take care of something else, it's nine o'clock and, and the whole thing starts over again. So yeah, no, the city versus the suburbs, I, I'll tell you right now, I don't like the city. Happy mm -hmm. to say it. I, I, it mm -hmm. there, is, there is too much going on. It is probably crazy expensive. I've never lived in New York City and probably never will. Yeah. It is too expensive. There is, especially New York City. I mean, it's so expensive. There are so many people. It's, you know, it stinks there. <laughs> the subway. <laughs> it actually train, smells. Right? It absolutely <laughs> does. And absolutely a first world problem. Happy to admit that as well. Um, but work from home, there, it, it's, it's a transition. And I'm, I think everyone probably follows a very similar, maybe they hate it and they love yeah. it and they hate it. And maybe it goes up and down the more that, and I'm very lucky here. I live in this apartment by myself. There's no one here and very quiet. I don't really have any issues. You know, when I told my, when I rented this apartment, I told my land, my landlords, you know, I won't be home from seven to seven on weekdays. And that might've been a selling point, but now I'm home all the time. So yeah. I try yeah. to keep quiet and try and make that transition really for them as well. But yeah, yeah it is, I love it. I love working yeah. from home. Yeah. Probably will, you know, keep that in my life at some point. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely, man. I, it's I'm I'm so happy that you that you you said it in that way because when you were when you're talking about how COVID has changed everything, yeah, and then you talked about how one day, mm-hmm. presumably, it'll get back to a normal thing, right? It's hard. <laughs> it's it's, hard, it's hard to right? see it at this point, mm-hmm. but if we get back to a normal where you have that opportunity, because actually this was one of the first things that I ever heard when the, when the pandemic started and everybody started working yep. from home. The f- one of the first things that I heard about was exactly what you just said there is the, this idea as a, you know, a corporate entity, mm-hmm. you know, executives is like, why are we spending all this money on office space when our, you know, our employees are work are, are going to be able to work from home now and per- foreseeably yeah. into the future. First question that I have for you is, it's an interesting space, like software development, and just yeah. like any sort of that. Because did you did you not have the opportunity before all this? Did you not have the opportunity to work from home? Was that not? Yeah, yeah. it's an interesting question. So it wasn't really laid out, you know. And they said, mm-hmm. you know, if and obviously, if I have a doctor's appointment here at you know three p.m., I have to work from home that day. There's no option. I cannot go in right. for a half a day of a, a three hour com- two hour commute, right? right? And then come back. I'm, I'm there for an hour. There's, there's no yeah. point. So. It was there and it was an option for when you had to. It was not like a, you know, because we thrived on collaboration. I think we still mm-hmm. do, right. but, you know, especially on a support team. And I think even more so like a, uh, people that are in it, not the tech, not the technical space, they're not coding. They love, you know, that's important for them to collaborate and have these meetings in person and talk to clients. And that's important. But from from here, you know, like as a developer, you can you can pretty much handle it from home. And, you know, you jump on calls with people if you need right. to, you know, you have you know, your messaging platforms, you have your slacks, your emails, your whatever you may use. But I, I think there's going to be there's going to be a shift. And I'm half I would definitely predict that right now, there's going to be a shift. Because like you said, they have this giant office space, maybe they don't get rid of it as a, as a corporate entity, maybe they downsize, maybe they realize, you know, we have to have this meeting room for this mm-hmm. meeting, maybe and we have right. to have a couple of desk setups, we don't need this massive office space, space direct because smack middle of New York City. But yeah, I completely forgot your question. Actually, I'm just rambling now. What's no, up? I mean, no, you pretty, no, you pretty much, you pretty much answered it. I mean, it was basically just, you know, did you have that before? And obviously, like you said, it wasn't really laid out for you. They didn't mm-hmm. say, oh yeah, Lucas, hey, you could work from home two days a week. It was kind of no. just like at will, whatever. If you needed, if you needed some time to uh, go to a doctor's appointment, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but the thing is, though, it's like very interesting because it brings up this question. And like I said, I've heard a lot of people during the pandemic talk about this: is what happens next? Is it well, okay. Well, first of all, for safety, right? I mean, yeah, however, course. however, you know, it ends up panning out, you know, vaccine, this, that, the other thing, whatever, like, is it safer for people to work from home? I mean, that's a discussion in and of itself. I don't really, not a health professional, so whatever, Me neither. but, <laughs> but, but, um, but like just from a, from a business standpoint, cause I feel like that's more where my head is. And I think that when you work for a corporation, you kind of get that feel a little bit more. You can kind of tell where, where things are going and you know, how people, um, you know, prioritize different things, right? And like you said, if if maybe they would downsize, maybe they yeah. have less office space. So maybe you would only have like half of your team or half of your, you know, colleagues come in on, you know, I don't know, Tuesday and Thursday and then like other people on Monday and Wednesday and like, you know, Friday's a work from home day. I don't know what they could do. But yeah. the point is that like, I just feel like you said it yourself with the with the the commute and everything like that. And presumably there's a lot of other people that are doing the same thing as you. Right, not just at Blue Matrix, but all over. Yeah, you know, of course. Corporations in in the in the city, it's like maybe it would just be better if people are home some of the time. Right. I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult for corporations to make sure that everybody's getting their work done and everything like that. But I think that working from home at least a little bit, you know, having more of a flex schedule yeah. like that could be a lot provide a lot of you know beneficialness to just like I know that I wouldn't want to drive you know fly in there via the uh, the <laughs> LIRR uh, whatever it is with. <laughs> For uh, you know, two hours both ways every single weekday, but I don't know. I'm happy to hear that you're that you've adapted to it. Yeah. and it's it's better now. There least. are some challenges, man. There there are like uh, not even I'm not even from an employee point of view from a corporation because I love it. you'll hear this but maybe it's a string here that goes throughout the whole podcast. But security yeah. mm-hmm. when uh, when you have when you trust uh, your employee to take their maybe it's it's I'm assuming it's a work given you know, laptop or computer. There's a level of trust there. Like, are you mm-hmm. using a public internet connection? Are you using a private internet connection? Should we set up a VPN for employees? Right. And I think this was a bit of a trial by fire for people because if we <laughs> yeah. didn't have a work from home policy set, it's Im- it's important that we do now, right? Because something right. like this can happen for for disaster purposes. Mm-hmm. We have a VPN. Is there hard drive encrypted in case of some sort of ransom attack? You know, th- mm-hmm. these things have to be considered and maybe should have been beforehand. But you know, mm-hmm. I think that's probably every company, right? Not knowing yeah. this was going to happen, you got to just figure it out. And I think. 
Blue Matrix has done an excellent job of trying to, you know, make sure everybody is secure and everybody, every, every all the data is secure, which is something I talk about a lot. And uh, yeah. was it was involved a bit in the beginning of, of Blue Matrix. Yeah. No, yeah, certainly. I think that uh, it, so- it sounds like it's going great. I mean, all mm-hmm. things considered, right? I mean, it, the transition has, has worked well. We'll see what yep. happens moving forward and everything. But um, that is that is a real big deal that I've also heard from a lot of people is that, you know, nobody really expected something like this. No. So it's tough to have those things in place before you kind of just have to yeah, roll with it, it and get it all get it all going but I, I got very lucky too because you know I, I, I love computer games and <laughs> I pride myself on having I have a pretty I have a great setup right here I yeah. have a couple monitors and not everyone has that not everyone even has a desk right to work from <laughs> right. maybe they're at the dining room table but yeah I had I'm very lucky in the fact that I had a pretty easy transition to just plug my computer in and I have a pretty you know it's not built for productivity but it sort right. of is now you know having a yeah. couple monitors having the right keyboard and the right the right mouse so that was another part of it too you have to sort of invest in your home setup at that point and something I've done yeah Certainly, I want to get in more to the to the gaming and everything like that because we do have a, we like do it we have a, we do have a we do have a good <laughs> bit about that. Um, let me let me let me tie this up with one question though. Yep. What do you see yourself? It might be difficult. Obviously, mm-hmm. you've been there. You're having a good time. Everything seems you know a, you know I'll be at the craziness and everything like that. It seems like it's going well. It seems like you're enjoying yeah. yourself. You enjoy the company. Do you have any idea? Have you ever thought about to this point like your next steps, like your path? Like, would you do you continue to see yourself? being a developer is there a path to move up to more of like i don't know managerial uh ex, you know executive type roles in that company do you think like have you just just in general in your future regarding the software development industry yeah. like what's kind of your do you, have you thought about your plans at all um you know a little bit i i, I don't i don't I know it's early i know it's much. early it is early right <laughs> <laughs> still is still, still 23 and uh yeah. again very fortunate to have worked two years here already which mm-hmm. seems insane to say but I think two years in January, actually, like we talked about. But yep. I don't know, man. I, I do love developing software. I love being right involved in the technical aspects of things. I I often have asked myself the same question. You know, managerial wise, you, you lose a bit. You lose that touch. I think. You know, mm-hmm. you, maybe you're not coding as much, right? You're right. telling people what to code. Maybe you provide some strategic visions of where to go. But I don't know if I'd be great at it. If I'm being honest with you, mm-hmm. I, I find myself. You know, as much as people maybe this is a bit of a bad connotation, a code monkey. I sit here, I put my headphones on and I just tackle some tasks for the day and I code and I, I, I make, you know, I put some impacts and I think that might not be exactly what people strive to be. I do love software development. There absolutely aren't opportunities for me to move up and, and do different things here. So I'm mm-hmm. happy at Blue Matrix and will continue to be and I think continuing to do software development for a very long time. We'll see if that changes, yeah. of course, and we might come back next year on something completely different, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We'll see next time we have you on. Yeah, we'll see absolutely. if you're in, in any different paths. But no, <laughs> man, yeah, def- definitely best of luck there. Keep moving forward because that's uh, that's an incredible we'll field to be in and uh, especially with FinTech and all the shit going on there. That's that's dope. So Yeah, no, it's interesting. Like you said, FinTech, but like there's opportunities <laughs> everywhere. Oh, for every sure. Type of com- uh, every type of company, there's so many different facets of software is it's ubiquitous at this point having a software involved somewhere right so definitely. there's so many opportunities and i think that's why i picked that's why i picked this field maybe so yeah definitely definitely um so let's jump into this then let's, let's jump into let's jump into uh into one Happy of i would to. say probably one of your maybe one of your newer ventures i know you've mm-hmm. probably been doing it for a while but i, I noticed it recently and it, it yep. piqued my interest because i'm kind of doing not gaming but i mean you know we're, we're stream buddies we're stream bros stream we both, bro. both got the mics you know uh <laughs> So, um, so talk to me about maybe the origin of just like kind of your gaming enthusiasm yeah. and then, um, you know, like what you've been doing on Twitch and what, what kind of mm-hmm. your, your, and even Instagram a little bit too. I know you've had some stories and stuff like that. Yeah. Is, is it Lucas gaming? What was yeah, it? Yeah. You know, the brand, we're still, <laughs> brand. We're still working on the working brand. On the brand. I, I don't want to, I used to brand myself into some random stuff. Like I, the word poise was something that was, is, is what? You know, you Dude, I need to know the origin of that that word it's on it's on your game it's your gamer tag it's your email like what is this dude what Um, is going on what what a story to be told right now but i hope my friend andrew listens to this podcast (laughs) but when we were younger me and andrew um we're best friends since we grew up right we grew up together really around the same neighborhood we had this thing where we would just we would get a word or get a phrase or some sort of saying and we would just stick to it. Maybe we'd yeah. beat it to death. I'm sure people would say that, <laughs> yeah. but it would be like our thing, you know, like that's our word of like the month of the year even. Yeah. Right. So yeah. things like that. And that was what was interesting to us. And we found we crack each other up, maybe yeah. annoyed everybody else around <laughs> us, but we'd crack each other up. And one of those things, I believe it originated around my high school. I played tennis in high school for a few, yeah. for all four years. Um, And 
there was something to be said about like you, you would hear sports announcers say like oh he's poised in the pocket right and in football yeah. mainly right they'd say that and we latched on that was it right <laughs> you hear it once and and he's saying i don't even know if we said it in the right context so we would say good poise it makes i don't think <laughs> any sense right it's not meant to be said like that but it, it sort of it caught hold in tennis and then it, it, it just blew up right like yeah. the school people like you knew me as poise and now like i can't get rid of it right so <laughs> It's a terrible story, but that was just a thing we used to say. It's so That's stupid, crazy. but... And Andrew might tell you we were stupid as hell, and I think we were probably for saying all this crap. But yeah, that's that's where that came from, and... uh it, I, that's where I branded myself first, and I thought, like, this is exactly what people know me for, and it's, I feel like it's the stupidest thing ever. So I, I, I want to be known for me, you know, I want because I don't think yeah. people watch me, and we can get right into it. I, I did a lot of gaming, so yeah. I... When I was younger, I did a lot of console gaming. I've, like, ever since I was, like, really young, like, I played GTA um, San Andreas with my brother yeah. a lot. And I was so young, we had to mute the audio because my parents didn't want me to hear like what was going on. Yeah. Uh, and they they don't like cursing and everything, but you know <laughs> yeah. maybe they didn't know what exactly was going on in that game because that's the worst least of ever the problems, right? So <laughs> yeah. that's where we started. And you know I, I grew up with consoles. I grew up with Xbox and PlayStation, mm -hmm. the original PlayStation. And I think that's probably a lot of people's path because it's so accessible. You just mm -hmm. pick up a console and you got a controller and you play. Right. And then you know that's where my fascination for computers came in. I'm like. Yeah. This is the next level. This yeah. you could tell I'm a gamer. I got the gamer chair, of course. Yeah. <laughs> the racing chair. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, and then I begged. I mean, I tell you, I begged, begged my parents for a laptop, and I, I, I they're gonna laugh at this because I, I asked every day, I have a gaming laptop. Can I get a gaming laptop, and I asked every single day. I wanted a laptop at the time, which was weird, but I yeah. did, and I maybe it was just the portability of it, even though I yeah. probably never took it anywhere. I think it was a <laughs> Lenovo. Um, it was like purple. It was the most bizarre thing, but yeah. that's where my love of gaming started, man. I, I started in this game called um, Daisy, which was a mod mm -hmm. for a popular yep. game Arma 2. Yep. Oh man, there's something about it. There's something about computer games where you just escape, and it, there's nothing. You just you're in that world, and, and you're you know you're just playing and you're having fun. But what I find most interesting about it is the people you meet, the friends you make on gaming. That Definitely. people that maybe live in the same live live along line with me, but I've never met. But yeah. we just play games together, and it's like they're my best friend. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got into PC gaming and then built my first PC in college, actually. Probably around the time we met, if I'm being honest. I mm -hmm. think I built my PC then. And yeah, man, and then you got the monitors, and I'm a total nerd, which maybe you've already got that vibe. <laughs> total nerd. Love hardware. I love the best of the best hardware, yeah. and I love the best keyboard. I love all of it. So, yeah. And that's where my fascination with PCs began. And, you know, man, I, I there's the concept, and whenever all those streamers blew up, right, like Ninja and all those people, I hate to bring yeah. up Ninja necessarily because that's something <laughs> I can think of, but yeah. those people blew up, and, and you, you make this money on Twitch, but that's, that's not why I started, and that's probably mm -hmm. not what I'll ever really be. That's not my goal, right? I don't mm -hmm. necessarily love making money on Twitch. Like, that's not what I'm going to do, but, and I might never get there, but what I what I loved about it is that the, the, the essence of gaming, like I said, is friends and, and experiencing the game with somebody. And that's why I find it hard sometimes to get into single player games because I'm not experiencing, I'm not sharing my experiences with somebody. But when you stream, and it, initially it was not for anybody, like it wasn't yeah. for public, you know, consumption. It was like, yo, like I texted my friend, like I'm streaming, like come watch. <laughs> yeah. And like, you know, you get some family, you get some friends in there, and then maybe you're getting roasted, which is the funniest part, right? <laughs> I, I make the stupidest play in the world, I'm dead in three seconds. And you got people in the chat like laughing, my friends laughing at me. Yeah. So yeah, that's where that's where I began on Twitch and you touched on it like i'm still starting i was trying to find my my groove really mm -hmm. but because it, it is a spare time thing and you know right. time eludes me these days but yeah so yeah ask me any question about switch and i love <laughs> it I, I absolutely love doing it and it's something it's, it feels very rewarding you it pop on and i'm playing i'm starting to look up and it's been two hours of me playing the most random game with friends and we're absolutely having a blast so yeah it's fun no, definitely, man. I I know that I've caught a couple of your streams. I've I've, I've jumped in there. Um, that one yeah. time you're that one time you're playing Raft. Yeah. I don't even know. Like people play these games, and I'm like, I don't even know what Me the neither. hell is going. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. We're figuring it out. I got some guy in chat telling me that I messed this up. This is supposed to be here, and it's just the funniest experience, man. We're laughing about it. It's so fun, man. Yeah. But yeah. it's so hard. What I find difficult about Twitch though is like, if I really want to take it seriously, which I think I will at some point when I have mm -hmm. a bit more time. Yeah maybe get a bit more solidified like i have this microphone i want to have like i don't want to put up a stream that just sounds awful right i don't want to have a right. stream that looks awful but you know i'm working on investing in that but yeah there's something to be said about just you, you turn on you put your webcam on and people are watching you play a game from wherever in the world and mm -hmm. they know they absolutely every one of them knows better than i do of course because that's yeah. just how twitch <laughs> works everybody yeah. knows anything everything yeah. right but yeah I'm, I'm happy that you were able to jump in a couple yeah. times and something i want to do more frequently yeah i uh i I've and I have some experience not with the gaming side of it, but just you know yeah. streaming and and stuff like that and just the 
I don't know what it is about live content <laughs> yep. is just awesome. You know, mm-hmm. you, you mentioned a little bit there is you can be anywhere in the world. You'd be talking about anything. You'd be playing any sort of game. It's cool to have that live interaction with people. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I've kind of fallen in love with. I mean, I don't get too many people that come into my streams yeah, and either. I'm not playing <laughs> or anything, but, um, you know, it's, it's just cool to have other, other people elsewhere in the world come in and chat with you, whether it's on just, you know, criticizing the way you're playing of the course, game which always <laughs> seems to be the case or me. what it is and then the other thing too is like you mentioned with the your love of computers and love of technology yeah it has been really fun for me like building like the setup that i have mm-hmm. and like the software too is uh, the amount of things that you can get for free today is unreal Amazing. you know it's just like all the different things that you know kind of play with your stream to mm-hmm. to do different layouts and stuff like that um you know it's just yeah, we talked about that, right? We yeah. that's where we sort of we were like, you know, what yeah. do you use to do this? And it's so fun to be like, you know, talking about you know stream elements for your yeah. overlays. And you, I was like, I tried this, like, wait, I didn't know that existed, right? So, <laughs> yeah. and like, it's all free. It's so yeah. accessible now. Yeah. And I think you can even stream from like your PS4 these days, or yeah. your PlayStation directly with like a webcam, mm-hmm. which I think is so interesting. The the more we can make it accessible, the more I think people are going to have fun and fall in love with creating content. A and B, mm-hmm. gaming with friends. There is. There is nothing better than playing a game with your friends, and I'm yeah. happy to say that. Like, there's nothing better than, and single player games are great, right? You invest mm-hmm. so much time, you are like a completely different person in this game, but right. nothing better than just hanging out and absolutely finding these blast moments with your friends in games. Maybe not even playing the game, but you're having a blast with it. So, yeah. Have you like how is your how would you say your streaming experience has been so far from like a like a Twitch standpoint? So obviously, yeah. like you have the channel and you have and you go on there like. So, with somewhat frequency but like Working is it on. like yeah what what is your again i'm asking about goals and plans or whatever but like yeah as far as like moving forward can you kind of see yourself like diving into more of it had you, I'm, I'm assuming that i know you're not doing it for money business mm-hmm. or anything right now you're yeah. doing it for more for enjoyment but have you thought about it at all has you thought even like just some some random ideas that have popped in your head about how yeah. to take it to the next level yeah it's difficult and um i'll tell you i watch a lot of streams too i love i was gonna ask content. that yeah yeah, yeah. I love watching content. People like, um, I don't know if you've seen any gaming people, but like Tim the Tatman, I find extremely yeah. interesting, extremely yeah. funny. He's like his own character. And that's exactly yeah. what I would love to be a part of because, and that's where this is where I touch on your question is that mm-hmm. Twitch is so saturated, especially gaming mm-hmm. is so saturated. So I see two paths. You have to be either incredible at the game to a mm-hmm. point where people are, are worse than you. So they want to watch to know to get better, right. which will never be me, never. <laughs> Um, or the second path is that you're entertaining while you play. And I think that's where Tim the Tatman goes in. Don't get me wrong, he's a, an above average like gamer, right. but it, it, people you tune in because he's going to fail and he's gonna, it's yeah. going to be funny and you experience yeah. that together. But you know what's interesting about that Raft stream that you brought up <laughs> is that, um, yeah, it was fun and I didn't know what I was doing, but those are one of the only streams where like I saw myself peeking into the you know the double digit viewers, right? Which maybe mm-hmm. not doesn't seem like a great milestone, but it was. And yeah, no, it's, there, it's a milestone. There's, yeah, because, and I think it's because, and I hear other streamers say this too, is that when you play a game like Call of Duty Warzone, there's already 400,000 viewers. There's already tens of thousands of streamers. And to get to where I am, you got to scroll the wheel for two years to get to the yeah. bottom where I am. And it's so hard to get discovered. But mm-hmm. I think, yeah, playing a game like Raft, where in total I think there was 20 viewers and I was eight yeah. of them, right? So finding yeah. a game that no one, not no one, but it's a little bit less saturated as I think the way I want to go. But then again, I don't want to sacrifice the enjoyment of the game so i can get people to watch because then again then i think that they're going to watch and they're going to see that i'm not i'm pretty like an authentic person i'm not going to make it up like i'm not going to just act like i'm having fun if i'm not and i think me choosing a game is important that you have a balance of maybe it's a little bit less well known but it also is really fun so like i would want to stream cyberpunk right now i don't know if you're involved in that if you want to play that game but Mm -hmm. there's millions of people it's like i think they already had a million views on twitch like that would be so hard to get discovered Mm -hmm. um but again, it's so fun. And maybe I just want to experience it with some people. But right. so, like I said, you know, finding a game to get discovered in that's a little bit less viewed. And take this advice with a grain of salt because I have no idea what I'm doing as well. But that's something I thought about <laughs> yeah. is that. And then the big one is a schedule, consistency, mm-hmm. which I am awful at, immediately yeah. awful. But because I just like, you know, it's, you know, 8, 8, 8, 8 p.m. Like, yeah, let's turn on the stream. Like, you know, it's not going to work. You have mm-hmm. to have. And there's another thing too, but like, yeah, let's start with this is that, you know, you have to have a schedule. You have to be consistent so that if someone tunes in on a Tuesday, they know you're going to be live again on Thursday and right. Mm-hmm. It's enough that they follow. Maybe not because you know, maybe they're not going to look at the notification, but you know, you want to get followers too, but right. man, I was going to say the third thing completely forgot, <laughs> but you know, that's, it's important to you know have that balance between 
you know, the, the games you want to play and, and something that's a little bit less popular and a schedule. It's yeah. tough though, man, to yeah. like just put yourself in that mindset to be consistent. I'm gonna stream Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. But even if it's once a week, maybe just set that schedule up in Twitch. I think they have a front end sort of view mm -hmm. of it. But that's important to get people to come back to know when you're streaming and when you're not streaming. You bring up a great point about like audience uh, acquisition. Mm -hmm. So tough. I, I think I think that your tactics there make a lot of sense, and I think that's probably you know what most people either do is like they're either really really good or they're yeah. like entertaining in Funny, a sense. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know. I don't know. I mean, as far as just spitballing ideas here, I think what, what I've seen at least that has probably helped at least some people is just the marketing of their stream mm. and their brand is like the thing that takes them to the next level or gets them, you know, more, more eyes on their stuff. And like, it's so interesting. I know we're talking about Twitch, but it's interesting oh, how yeah. other platforms yeah. have started to play into personal brands in general or gaming brands or whatever it is. But like for instance, I'll give you I'll give you a great example here. Tim mm -hmm. the Tatman. Yep. I've heard of him. I've I've watched him a few times. I actually a buddy of mine turned me on to Nick Merckx. I love so. Nick Merckx too, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> so, uh, so he, he's hilarious. But obviously he's huge. Uh, and and uh, for instance, though Tim the Tatman is the is the one that uh, the example pertains to. Is like I'll be scrolling through TikTok, and then if you get onto the goddamn war zone algorithm and you yep. start you know start seeing that stuff you'll see like him freaking out and him and uh, that other guy jordy yeah, right yeah. and like 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 their content on the other platforms is like the the highlights from youtube or, or rather actually youtube is another is another thing we'll talk about that in a second but like you have your twitch stream which is just like straight up live which if you're watching like a twitch stream some of it is actually boring. You know, I always wonder, like, these people have, yeah. like, a ton of people on there, and they're they're kind of being entertaining, but a lot of times there's there's a lot of downtime. There is. And then you take the best parts of that, you throw it on YouTube mm. so people can see your, your highlights and everything there. That's what I've seen people do. And then you take your real short funny clips and you put that, or montages, and you put that on TikTok oh, or yeah. something else. That's That's, like, a lot more work <laughs> because yeah. because you're, you're doing multiple things. But that is something that I've seen not just in gaming, but in all sorts of the places, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'll tell you a, a personal anecdote about this podcast is that I should be doing yeah. a lot more to clip out certain things and put them on YouTube as their own little clips rather than hour, two hour long episodes. But I think that that really, you know, kind of coalesces into like a, a, a solid, if you want to call it marketing strategy, but a way to build an audience because you're hitting people in different places. You're hitting people that might have different perspectives, you know, like maybe a TikTok user that watches streams but not too often and then they see you and i don't know just more awareness for yourself and yeah. for the stuff that you're doing i think in general it's so like that was you know that was the third thing i was gonna say i forgot yeah. but that was exactly what i was gonna say is yeah. that when we bring up tim and tamman again i don't want to talk about him the whole time but like yeah. um when people donate to him and sub to him and tell him like listen now you have any tips for a smaller streamer he says tiktok all <laughs> the time yeah and i use tiktok for a little bit i ended up deleting it but yeah well, it's I chinese spyware i was I a little scared of data and like maybe i'm a little paranoid <laughs> which i am but um he says you know make your stuff on tiktok you know like he says a lot of the people that you know start on tiktok blow up into this you know youtubers and, and twitch streamers and it's interesting to even hear tim say like people call him a youtuber like i wouldn't call him that but his right. youtube blows up and so does other streamers you know you get those clips like you said the most exciting i think usually in like warzone it's like they just clip one match like one gameplay and that's mm -hmm. enough like to be a youtube video mm -hmm. so much so that like he'll it, he's cognizant of it and like you know and a lot of streamers are like we gotta get youtube content today and it's almost like Twitch has become, for some of them, ways to make money on YouTube, ways to make content on YouTube because they see that as maybe a bigger platform. I'm not sure, yeah. but I think like if I were to like go hard, which maybe I want to do soon, maybe make a TikTok, make a separate YouTube channel, separate social media accounts. Like I'm using my personal ones to promote stuff because like I don't want to make an account, yeah. but maybe I should, right? To, to yeah. make it more um, targeted. But that's what I would do. And you say, like, diversify your content. Put it everywhere, and maybe you get somebody. And I think that's, like, really important. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a lot to say for that. I mean, when you can build a brand that, like, is just, you know, abstractly like an entity in a sense, mm -hmm. and then take that brand and contextualize it on Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, I mean, wherever you want to go. You don't have to do all. But you know what I'm saying? Like, when you can take that brand, put it, you know, as a profile, we'll just put it as simple as that on all yeah. those different platforms and then put out content that is specific to that platform, right? Yeah, like YouTube no. videos is like, you know, 
minutes long, like 10 minutes, 20, whatever, you know, a big intro and, where you're shouting. And cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I, I will say I, we're not, we're not just like, you know, sucking off random streamers here, but I we will are. go back. I, <laughs> I will go back to Nick Merckx because yeah. I, I've noticed what he's done. Like I don't watch his streams all the time, but he is funny. He's a funny dude. His streams are good. His streams are pretty entertaining, but you know, he takes that stuff and it's not him. This is, that's another discussion we'll get into in a second, but, yep. but like <laughs> him as a brand, he has the streams on, on, uh, on Twitch, and then he has over on YouTube like uh, a video. It's actually mostly a video. Like he talks over it. He says, "Yeah." You know, in the beginning, he says like what it's all about, like what you know they're doing. Like the I remember when I was more into Call into Call of Duty, uh, you know, like the best gun, the most meta, whatever. Yeah, they like and, really um, specify it. Yeah, and they go through all that, and it's good. Sh- like it's good stuff. Like yeah. maybe it's not good for everybody, obviously, if you don't like gaming. But if you do, it's really good content. And I think just that saturation when when a when one platform is saturated, but you can get your stuff out in multiple places that is where you start to build an actual brand because you're not just building a channel like you're building a brand because it's all those things combined so you gotta you gotta always think about this for instance what if like you're only streaming on twitch and you get a following there and then twitch like dies tomorrow yeah you know then you're fucked like mixer yeah yeah. so i don't know just just random things to kind of think about there but you know, it is a lot of work, like I said, and I, I'm kind of in the same. You're the boat. expert here. <laughs> well, I'm in. I'm in a different. I'm in different niche, but different industry, kind of. But it's the. It, it's a lot of work because you have to. You have to actually put in that work to get those those that other content for those other things. Yeah. I'm just I'm just being lazy and maybe making excuses. But I know, like, once you get to a certain point, you can get help and you can get people to kind of like build that team. And uh, but I know it's really rewarding. It's just you gotta you gotta have a strategy, I think. And I'm excited to see where it goes with you, man. Because like I yeah, I hope so. I, I think like, be, that's the I goal, though, dope. right? Like you touched on it. Like those streamers now, like those giant streamers, they just I'm not saying that I'm not making their job easy, but they get yeah. on. They stream for six, seven hours. Mm-hmm. They have an editing team that pulls that together into YouTube videos. They probably record the intro, which I don't think was a thing usually. Like now, they yeah. start a lot of YouTubers start doing that yeah. um, to try and make it more targeted to YouTube, like you said. But you get to a point where you just you just play games and you just make yeah. content. Like there's mm-hmm. not. I think that's the end goal for me too. Like yeah. if I were to get to a point there, like I would love to just get up and play games and not be worried about editing or worried about putting it on TikTok. You have people for that, and then, like you said, I think that's where people are headed. Right. It's an interesting thing too, because what you just said there kind of gave me a different idea. It's like you start out where you're at, we'll say, right? And you're and you're just playing because you, you like to play. Say, yeah. Well, you're playing because you like to play and you're, uh-huh. you're meeting with people and stuff like that. And you're streaming once in a while. Maybe you're getting a couple followers and mm-hmm. doing all that. Then you're like, okay, well, I want to take this to the next level. Like you said, you might do soon. And you're like, okay, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to, I'm going to devote a lot more time to it. Yeah. So then what you have to do is you have to build those brand channels. You have to do all this stuff and you have to actually put more work into it maybe than you would like because i'm in the same boat seriously (laughs) like with just different stuff because you have to put more more work into the things that you might not want to do necessarily right now like editing and all that sort of stuff because that work is hopefully going to get you to the next step and that's like what you just said and you have other people and you're able to kind of like outsource some of that stuff but unfortunately that's just kind of the I think that's the the essence of creating a business or any sort yeah. of thing because you have to get you have to do other people's jobs, you know, yeah. other people's jobs before you can hire Delegate. somebody. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a wild. But thing. Am I am I weird to be scared of like editing videos? It's so daunting. Like I I woke up. I think I saw on yeah. you were using whatever yeah. um, DaVinci something yeah. something. DaVinci you, Resolve. You can plug yeah. it. Yeah, plug yeah, it. Yeah. Resolve. Yeah, yeah. I open it up and I have no idea what I'm looking at. As someone who is technical and software, yeah. you know. I'm looking at this thing. It's so daunting and looks yeah. so complicated. Like it's so hard for me to start. Like here's a video, make a yeah. video out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have you never edited at all? Never edited. I mean, I've done a little bit, like the bare minimum. Like put yeah. some things in a timeline and like. Right. There you go. You know. I gotcha. Well, I think there's a there's a couple things just to touch on that because I think we might have some people on the on the stream that yeah. like, kind of feel the same way or on the you know watching that might have a similar thing. But it goes beyond DaVinci Resolve and video editing. But what I found here is. I was the same way like and it goes back to something we referenced earlier when we were talking about getting better at getting better in a sense You're there's like this weird in. I like it's that. Yeah, yeah, just I, I call backs is a big thing yeah <laughs> um but no it's it's a it's this I just feel like it's such a versatile skill that a mm-hmm. lot of people have and they they kind of they, maybe they don't they don't realize it or they just get you know scared in a sense which is normal I mean like mm-hmm. I don't I didn't like figuring out like I was also scared when I was like okay well I have to edit all this video and I have to do all this stuff and you just Daunting. continue to progress but the thing is 
when you open up like DaVinci Resolve, for instance, you have this new world in front of you. It's like, what do I do? How do I do this thing? And But then, you know, if you're resourceful, you jump on YouTube, you watch a couple of videos, you type in like, how do I edit in DaVinci Resolve? It gives you the basics. And then you kind of just go from there. I think what I think where a lot of people get stuck is they think that they have to know everything from the get-go or they mm-hmm. feel also that they can't learn as they go, which I have been super guilty of and I've completely plagued myself for a long time with that. But then one day I was just like, you know, and I still struggle with, but occasionally it's like, just, I don't care how this end result is going to look. I need to get something out there. Start, Yeah. And you just learn, you just learn over time. Honestly, speaking specifically to you, I mean, there, I guarantee you that if you, if you devoted like a day of into DaVinci Resolve, you would know it, you would know it probably above average. Like I think to other you think people. I'm smarter than I, than I actually am. I don't, I don't think so <laughs> because, because if it, it's, it's all about the mindset, I think, and you know, one thing I would, for, for, again, specifically to you, I would attribute it to like developing and coding. Like I look at code right now, I do a little bit for website development stuff like an HTML, CSS, but like I think back to my time with Java and stuff. It's like, if I looked at that right now, like I'd understand the premise, but I wouldn't, I'd be the same way. We were struggling, man. Yeah. We were. <laughs> I'd be the same way as like, as what you just said, you open up DaVinci Resolve, I'm like, what the fuck am I looking at? You know? So yeah. I, but I feel like over time, you know, you'd kind of learn it. You'd be able to get back to it. I think it's, there's a lot of things that go into it. I could talk for hours, but like, it's, we like, could, yeah. it's like, it's maturity. It's, it's, it's confidence. It's just mm-hmm. having this skill of you are able to figure things out and progress through things. And, and you just don't get bogged down by the yeah. you know, overwhelmingness of, of what something new might look like. I think that's the place to start, man. Like even... Yeah. I just set up, you know, just like, because at first I was just streaming and I would put the, the VODs would automatically, that would go to Twitch. Yeah. But, you know, there's a separate option on Streamlabs, OBS, which I'm sure you know, is just to yeah. record it. So, like, that's yeah. something I wasn't even doing, wasn't even thinking about. But, mm-hmm. and then I look back and, like, I'd love to have this clip. And yeah. you really create these funny moments. So, yeah. I'm going to start actually recording it. And then, then that makes me even more excited because then I got to get more hardware. Maybe I get a NAS. Maybe I get more, yeah. like, this giant storage. Maybe I yeah. really get, it. and that's what gets me excited. But yeah. something to start with, I think, is, like you said, having, even just the YouTube channel, I think, is an important place to start for me. And that's yeah. sort of my goal going forward. And I don't know if that's next two years, if that's next month. Who knows? You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, like I said, it's. I think it's fun no matter what. If it's gaming content, if it's business content or whatever. Twitch is just blowing up as far as like really the is. amount of people that are going on there doing all sorts of shit. And it's, it, it, I like the way the platform is maturing. I know they've had some some missteps recently with like DCMA stuff and all that. I watch, uh, I watch Harris Heller, Mm -hmm. um, alpha gaming and he, he's, he just rips on him. It's kind of funny. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, I don't know. I just, I'm excited for, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for the platform and I'm just, I really am looking forward to where it kind of goes from here. I appreciate it. I'm excited, man. And there's gotta be some time to start, you know, getting, getting a bit more serious. Definitely, definitely. But, uh, yeah, keep us updated. Like I said, um, you know, we'll have you back on obviously when you're a big, twitch streamer of course but, i'll come uh, back on just for you Mark. <laughs> i appreciate that um but uh but yeah super excited on that uh i know we're getting close to uh to time here mm-hmm. so i want to make sure that we do what we do for every single guest that comes on fuel by progress i got these last final three questions that i always ask everyone let's hear it and um you know i'm gonna run them by you because i think they tie everything together and you know just the whole the whole out- outro deal so uh the first one is we talked a lot about you know, people that you've had in your life, the experiences that you've had and everything. First question is, who are your top three influences, would you say, in your life so far? And they could be anybody. I, I have trouble answering this question because I have a, a ton. Question. Yeah. I know, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting one. <laughs> it's, they, could be, they could be directly in your life. They could be indirectly. They could be groups of people. They could be, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's just like the three biggest influences if you can kind of and you can describe them and everything like that it's just kind of uh and you know an insight into kind of what's molded you to where you're at now what a question um (laughs) i'd like to speak specifically to my parents i think that my parents gave me some of the best opportunities i could ever ask for like i said in the beginning they told me you want to go to this school we will figure it out and we'll get you there and i i didn't really have there's no limits there was no leash on me i really was independent to choose what i wanted to do and where i wanted to do it if I had told my parents I want to get a liberal arts degree, they would have said, absolutely. Like, we'll figure, let's go for it. Do what you want to do. Um, I would consider myself like, I'm pretty practical in, in, in a lot of ways, but 
my parents gave me every opportunity in the world and you know i wouldn't be anywhere near where i am without them right so mm -hmm. even like you know i struggle with mental health quite a lot and um they're the biggest supporters in the world you know and especially mm -hmm. at school like if i wasn't feeling well sometimes my, my most specifically remember i wasn't feeling well um mm -hmm. i struggled a lot with mental health in my stomach my mom drove to pittsburgh like that night That's it was crazy. like an eight hour drive and something I'll never forget, you know, just the dedication and the support that I've had throughout my life through my parents. Um, that's the one group I would, you know, immediately single out. Um, mm -hmm. I think you've only met her once. The next person I would recommend is my girlfriend, Tara. So mm -hmm. you met her once. I think it was only in passing. Like, I don't know yeah. how that happened. We were friends for years and yeah. I, I started we're dating busy, Tara. You yeah, know? we're <laughs> busy people. So I started dating Tara in high school and um, right before college, we did, you know, four years long distance. We're going on almost six years now next year so that is impressive man is, you know, kudos it was tough. kudos, kudos was tough. and i'm sure we talked about it you know we have the yeah. worst memories in the world of course yeah, but yeah. we talked about it and you know she is you know my rock and mm -hmm. always a, a fantastic supporter um someone that i would always go to and has been through some pretty tough times with me so yep. someone i would immediately shout out as well the third man this is tough mm -hmm. um you know who i will bring up is again more family I, i'm a very yeah. i love people of my family um i have a lot of friends of course you know friends mm -hmm. and whatever so yeah <laughs> Um, I'd bring up my grandpa. So my grandpa passed away in April very recently, but um, he was a huge inspiration to me and he was maybe the smartest person I've ever met. And um, mm. at 80, he was fixing our electrical outlets and telling me about hard drives that he used to, you know, talk, he used to work at AT&T at the time, way back when, when he was telling me about computers that used to be the size of a room. But yeah. without him, I, I truly don't think I would have went into computers, which is crazy to say, but someone who was super passionate about technology and super passionate about, you know, almost everything. And he was like an open book about history and knowledge and was always reading and someone I would really point to as an inspiration to the things I do and, and where I am in my life. Nice. Good shit, man. Yeah. You really rounded that up, right? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> all family, all people that are in your life, man. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's different every time I ask that question. And like I said, even for me, it's it's tough to narrow it down. It really is. I think you did a great job there. I, I appreciate and, it. And, and um, it's just, again, I ask it because it really... I think it ties together, you know, yeah. the type of person you become and, you know, you gave great examples there. So great, great stuff. Um, well, I do. Second question is if you could give advice to somebody like your best life advice or your best advice so far, something that's gotten you through to this point, you know, whatever it is, something that you always like have in the back of your mind, what, what would that be? Interesting question too. So yeah. I just touched on it. mental health is something that I, I always will talk about and always will be passionate about and will never shy away from a subject like that. But mm -hmm. um, I struggled with anxiety. I was on anxiety medication for almost close to six years, probably when we were in school. I don't know if you ever noticed it, but my, my anxiety goes straight to my stomach. And I have yeah. really struggled with like nausea and, and a lot of stomach symptoms, but that are related to, you know, how I think. But there is always somewhere to go. There is always something to do. There will always be another day. Something I would be very important. And I would always want to tell people that mental health is not a curse. It is not to be shied away from it is a topic to discuss and recently i've just gotten off that medication i'm actually going nice. to therapy and there's there is personal growth and, and you know don't mm -hmm. harp on the day there's, there's going to be something else nice yeah good stuff man I, we should have talked about that more i mean like is if we if we touch on it briefly here yeah, of course like how, how do you think so first of all congratulations i think well, i think that's it. i think that's a step in the right direction we're, we're still working on it we're well, getting I mean, there it's it's progress right it's, of course you know, fuel by progress <laughs> I put the title in the podcast nailed it there you go um, but let's talk about that for, for a yeah, second though, because I, it's something that I actually, I didn't know that about you. I, I, I was, uh, I'm happy that I you didn't, but I, I remember though the stomach thing. Like I remember like, I know like, you did. <laughs> I, I remember that. Did. And that's interesting that you, that you bring it up because especially in times like these, I think yeah. it would be remiss of us to not touch on it for a minute because Absolutely. I think that there has been, even in my life. I've tried to preoccupy myself with a lot of shit that I've done this year, but just the amount of things that have gone on and the way that it has thrown everybody through like yeah. a bunch of loops. Have you like, what is, has your, obviously it seems like your experience has, has been a positive one, but like, I don't know. I, I've just, I'm interested to hear your, your thoughts on it. And if, yeah. and if you've, if you've honestly, if you've heard of any other like, people that have been negatively affected by the way that just life has been for the last year yeah so i i think more and more people like mentally are just you know when you work from home and when you know everything has gone home and, and the more you lose jobs and the more life affects you yeah mental health r comes right to the forefront because yeah. like you said there there isn't anything to occupy that time maybe you are stuck at home maybe you don't have someone to be there for you but 
man, I, I, I'm very happy to have this time where I work from home where I can struggle with it. You know, I'm happy to like be there and struggle with it a bit. That's why I went off my medicine around this time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have the time to struggle with it a bit. You know, if I, mm -hmm. something's going on, I, I have the space I have, I don't have to, you know, wake up and go on the train for two hours if right. my stomach isn't great on, on a day, you know? So man, mental health, it, it has really affected me, you know, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy to know that you didn't notice it, but, yeah. and maybe you wouldn't if you met me, but, um, and that's the, that's the perfect segue into saying, you know, and not everyone is, is affected as everyone at the same way. Mm -hmm. and not everyone, medicine is not an, a, a solution for everybody. And it, and it was mm -hmm. for me at the time, but mm -hmm man, life just throws you for a loop, especially like you said this year. So it's important to, to talk to someone to, you know, mm -hmm. if therapists are available a anywhere from your seat, you know, you could FaceTime a therapist now. It's so easy and so accessible. And I'm sure there are ways, to, you know, hopefully help people pay for it. I don't know that necessarily, so I won't right. touch on it, but you know, there, there's always someone there and, and there are always solutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. That's a deep topic. Do you think topic. you struggled? You know, is there anything that uh, has affected you recently with this, with this uh, COVID experience? So, I mean, like with me, I think... I think that I'm, I, you, you could argue that I'm a little OCD with the way that I, that I want certain things done and the way that I kind of like keep stuff. I've, I've gone very minimal. Um, you know, I can, I can, you know, I don't, when I talk about this subject, I have never been, you know, I've never been diagnosed. I've never sought, sought treatment or anything like yep. that. And I don't really think that I've ever gotten to the point where I needed that. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that's just the case that, that I've, that I've been in, but I do think though that there are even without being like it's ridiculous but like in the trenches if you will like I don't yeah, know a better course. way to say that right even even without being somebody that's necessarily part of of uh that has that or anything or like diagnosed with anxiety or de or depression or anything anything in mental in the mental health spe yeah. uh, spectrum there I think there are some things that I've implemented in my life that have kept me happier more fulfilled and just like put yeah. myself in a better position so Quickly, the first thing is I was very, very almost, I don't want to say depressed, but I was very upset just with my whole being and myself mm -hmm. and my situation when I was working, uh, especially in that last year of working for um, the, the real estate agency, right? And it wasn't really because of the people there. Uh, people were there were great. You know, the job wasn't bad, but like it just got to the point where I think too many people especially myself in that situation, they don't, they don't like talk to themselves. They don't think about themselves in a sense. I see a lot of people nowadays where they put themselves last mm -hmm. or they put themselves behind everything else. And I've just totally flipped that. Like yeah. I used to be like, oh, well, I have to go to work because I have to make money because I have to, you know, just I'm, I'm this rat race type shit, you know, and I, I wasn't, I, I didn't want to do that anymore because it was just making me so miserable. And I was, it was the worst thing. It just kept getting worse and worse. And again, I blame, I always put the blame on myself because I think that's an important thing to do too, because I think a lot of this comes from helplessness. Yeah. And if, and if, you, if you feel helpless, then you you, you can't do anything because you're completely trapped. But if you always almost put the blame to you, it's like, I am at a job that I don't like. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's your choice to be there. Yeah. I know, I know it might seem like it's not because you need to make money and you do this, but you gotta, there's just, there's a lot of mental blocks I think that I've had and other people have where you have to, you have to get over them somehow. You have to say, look, Mark, uh, <laughs> the position that you're in is of nobody else's yeah. fault than your own. It might feel like other people are fucking with you, but it's, that's not really the case. It's like, you can quit. It yeah. might be difficult to, but you can quit, you know, or you can, or you can get out of a relationship that's toxic or you can do this, that, or the other thing. And some situations are much harder than others. I'm not going to say that I know everything, but that is the, the biggest thing that I've had to deal with in my life was honestly that like yeah. I, college was shit for me too. I mean, like, you know, we were, we were in market, we were doing all sorts of stuff, but mm -hmm. we got through that. We got we through did. it because it was kind of like fake life in a sense, it you was. know, but, but once you get out of that and then you get in the workforce and like, Oh, this is great. And like, you're doing great for like a year and a half. And then you're like, wow, this is starting to get pretty shitty. I don't want to be here mm -hmm. anymore, but what am I going to do? And that's too, cause other pressures are weighing on you. Other people are saying, you know, hey, uh, you gotta, you gotta just tough it out, dude, because this is life. Like, fuck that. I'm yeah. not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm so not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna live sixty years of this bullshit. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's kind of my answer to that question. Is I, I think I was real close, honestly, though. I think I was yeah. real close. Where if I would have kept on that path, I would have been 
very miserable for a very long time. And that's why I don't try to preach entrepreneurship. If anybody's listening to this, yeah, right. and if anybody, if anybody listens to the shit that I do, I'm not telling people to be entrepreneurs necessarily. I'm just, saying, paths, yeah. I'm just saying, do the shit that makes you makes life worth living, makes Absolutely. you fulfilled. If you love your job at Blue Matrix, you stay with your job at Blue mm-hmm. Matrix. But, you know, it, and it's, if you if you love, you know, working at XYZ, you stay there. Like, but man, if you start to feel miserable, you got to do something about it because be it's all, it's you. Yeah. It's you, man. And I I don't know. That's that's kind of my that's that's my uh my thoughts on it. And my my life has just gotten so much better even in yeah, all this craziness. I'm so glad I did it then because it, it would have been it would have been way harder I think and I I feel very very bad for the people that are that are struggling especially during this time absolutely but at the same time you know I I don't like to I like to have empathy but only to a that sounds ridiculous but only to a certain point in the sense of I I know it's difficult but you gotta fucking do something about it mm-hmm. you have to and. That's kind of I don't know. Put that on t shirt. <laughs> it's difficult, but do something about it. Yeah. yeah maybe absolutely. maybe I will. Maybe will. I will. FBP shirt. I we'll like see. it. We got the apparel coming. It's on the I like way. It. It's we're, we're Can't working wait. on I want to buy one first day. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Um but anyway, yeah. what was the third question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um no, I'm glad we put that in there though. That's absolutely that's, no. that's, a, that's a big that's part of my important. life. Yeah. Something that's I forgot important. about. But hey, listen, yeah. you, you can't forget about it. It's always there. Absolutely. No, I mean I I appreciate you being open and honest and I and you know, that is um I think that's huge because again, the the transparency and stuff like that. If you tell, you know, even the six people that watch this episode, hopefully, hopefully more. I don't know, but like, six. you know, the uh, anybody that watches that, anybody that you know hears that from from people that have experience on it, just different perspectives. I know that that is so valuable. So again, I just mm-hmm. appreciate it. So, um, okay, last question. Yeah, here uh, we are. <laughs> not even a question, honestly. Okay. It's it's sure. a layup. It's a layup. It's I like uh, the layups. We t- we talked about it a little bit before. It's, um. Anybody that comes on the show, again, I greatly appreciate it. Thank mm-hmm. you so much. Um, I want to do my part in giving you know anybody the platform, obviously, that comes on, but I also want to give back a little bit as w- any way that I can. So this is the kind of the time that I just say, hey, plug whatever you want, promote whatever you want, and um, you can talk about it here, and then I will have all the links and everything like that down in the description for anybody that wants to check anything out. But yeah, so it's, it's thank you, I appreciate it. And yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be here, man. It's an yeah. honor. Like when I watch the people that are on the show previously, yeah. Yeah. it's hard to compare myself. You know, I'm just here, I'm living. But We're all um, people, man. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I'll, I'll plug my Twitch. Um, something I want to do more seriously. So watch out for that. It's uh, twitch.tv forward slash, it's my full name, Lucas Brennan, and then underscore at the end. Couldn't get the regular name, of course. Mm-hmm. But that's my Twitch uh, username. Um, man, look for me on LinkedIn too. Lucas Brennan, my full name. You can search me up. Um, connect with people. Let's see if we can, you know, create a community here. So yeah, again, very happy to be here. Honored, actually, yeah. Mark. I appreciate you having me on here and I'm happy to talk to you. It was great catching up. Yeah, dude, same, same. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, links, and, links and everything, like I said, down in the description. But um, yeah, man. So that's all we got. I think I thank you so much. I really do. Thank you. It's it's been a great time. Um, and I'd love to have you on again when uh you know everything blows up and yeah, and happy big, to be back. You're the next. You're the you're the next Nick Merckx. <laughs> I can't wait, man. I got to <laughs> yeah. get a little bit more. You know, I'm a little too strong. <laughs> yeah, huge, I think. Yeah, you got to get huge. <laughs> but uh, thanks again, man. I really appreciate yeah, it. No worries. Thanks, yeah. Mark. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Fueled by Progress with my guest Lucas Brennan. We thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll talk to you guys in the next one. Yep, thank you.